Okay, welcome back everybody to video nine in the HQ Lab series. Uh, just before we get started today, I um, just want to clear up the issues that we've been having in the last video. Uh, we had some sound issues and we were still experiencing the, the slowness, uh, especially in the, the FMC and FTD. So these were one in the same issue, I guess. So the, the lab environment is actually run on my PC, which is uh, up on my loft now. Um, so I remote onto this. Uh, and I was also running the screen recording software OBS to record the lab on the same machine. Uh, it turns out that it was actually me recording on the machine that was slowing it down, which is why it threw me because I was testing it outside of the video. It's working fine. And then when I ran the video, it was slow. Uh, so what I've done now is I've moved my um, screen recording software onto uh, the laptop that I use to remote onto the to the PC upstairs, and that should resolve the issues. Uh, also with the sound, um, the sound was being recorded on the software that was on the remote session, so I think that's where the issues for that was coming from. So hopefully that's been resolved. Um, so we'll go ahead today and we'll configure the, the DMZ part of the lab. So previously we configured the inbound NAT rule, so the static NAT rule to allow, well, any any IP, but we'll be testing from the external host through the firewalls and into the internal web server. So we'll just double check that. So we'll head over to devices and NAT to look at our NAT table. Yep, hopefully that was going to populate. I'm pretty sure we configured it in the last video. Okay, and yep, yeah, so here we go. We'll just make that a little bit bigger. So dynamic, that's our production internet access out inside internet access out dmz internet access out, uh, internet access out and then we have our static access rule from outside to our dmz server okay so we did configure it that's good what we'll do is we'll go ahead and configure the dmz switch this will be quite straightforward So we want ports gig 00, 0, 2 and 0, 1 all in VLAN 33, but we want to give them a description. So we'll go ahead, we'll create VLAN 33 first of all, we'll give it a name. We'll go into interface gig zero zero and that was the port going to FTD one. So we'll tell it to be an access port. We'll tell it we want it to be in VLAN 33. We'll tell it we only want it to be an access port. We'll turn on BPDU guard. And we'll also turn on port fast. We'll go into interface gig 0 slash 2, which I believe was the other. In fact, now we'll go back into gig 0 slash 1. We'll give it a description of uh, FTD1 DMZ. Now we'll go into gig zero slash two. 
we'll go up twice we'll change it the description to the right firewall we'll go up yep we want it to be an access port we want it to be AMD LAN 33 we want it only to be an access port we want to turn on VPDU guard and we want to turn on port fast as well okay great now that leaves gig 0 slash 1 that's just going to be DMZ web server We'll check our work. Oh. We'll give zero zero the proper description. Ah, yes, I think when I went back and did that, I selected zero one. This is why it always pays pays to double check once you've configured something and that is all we need um you'll notice there's no svi on here uh, i think i mentioned this in the previous video that generally on a dmz switch you wouldn't have any svis uh, the only possible one you would have is for management but we'll go ahead and we'll save that okay now we'll hop on over to the uh, web server itself uh, we'll double check uh, I can't remember if we configured the IP for this Okay, we haven't. So we will go ahead and give it its IP. This was 10.11.33.11. 24-bit mask. 10.11.33.1 is its gateway. We'll give it Cisco's DNS. We're also going to change this interface here so this is the one that connects to our management cloud and we'll use this to uh, remote onto this from the network management center in future rather than having to open up a new session to it so we were going up in increments of five for the management ips so we've got five ten fifteen twenty uh, 25 for the firewall, 30 for FTD1, 35 for FTD2. Okay, so it looks like we're starting at 40. So we'll give the external host dot 40. Give the web server dot forty five and we'll give the oop we'll select the right thing. There we go, and we'll give the internal client dot fifty. Uh, the three that were just allocated none of them have been configured yet so we'll do the web server now i 
172.29.129.45 slash 24 bit mask. We won't give it a gateway because we want it to route its um, traffic out of our infrastructure that we've created. We will go ahead and turn on remote desktop. Okay, yep, it's already configured. So if you watched any of my previous videos when we made the template for server 2019, uh, we actually turn this on and it's it comes on comes turned on as part of the template as soon as you deploy it. I had forgotten about that. Okay, so let's check. Uh, go away. So remote desktop. Over to 172.29.129.45. Okay, and that looks promising. Okay, and there we go. So the first thing we want to do on here <clears throat> is we want to enable the web services on here. If we go to manage, add roles and features. Yep, click next on that screen. Uh, role based, yep. Yep, this server. And we want to add Okay, it's a feature, not a role. That's why I can't see it. Uh, IIS, is that right? Ah, no, there we go. It is a role. Web server, IIS, that's the one I was after. Yep, we'll click install and we'll let that run through. We don't want to do anything fancy with this. Um, it's the it's the firewall bit that we're interested in really. So we're not even going to put a web page on here. We'll just use a default uh, Windows IIS page. As long as we can reach that, then we have proved the rules on the firewall. Okay, this is taking a bit longer than expected. <clears throat> um, however, I've changed from OBS to Streamlabs. Uh, it's the first time I've used it, and I don't actually see anywhere to pause the recording. Um, so I might go back and edit this out, if it's still in, and then, yeah, fast forward through this bit. Okay, so to check the web services, 
we'll open up a web browser and we'll browse to ourselves on our local address. Yeah, maybe a bit sluggish on here. Um, <clears throat> we've only given this one CPU and I think four gig of RAM. We won't be using this in the topology much, that's why. Yep, so our uh, home address is 127001. And hopefully this will give us the IIS page. There we go. Okay, so that's that bit completed. Um, we'll double check. I think we configured this interface on router 01. Let's go and confirm that, gig zero, zero. Yep, we'll confirm that for show IP interface brief. <coughs> the gig zero, zero, 13, 13, 13, one. Okay, and we will need to no, we won't need any routing because it's just going to be on the same <coughs> interface, on its own interface for root 001. So let's go and set up the external host. Okay, again, this, this one may be a bit sluggish. Um, I think we only give this one CPU again and four gigs of RAM. But we'll just have to live with it. I can't afford to give everything in the topology, you know, four CPUs or six CPUs. We'd, uh, we'd fast run out of resources. Okay, so Ethernet uh, zero is the one connecting to the router. And this needs to be on 13.13.13, <coughs> and we'll just say dot two. It was a slash 30. Uh, yeah, DNS doesn't really matter. It's not going to use DNS. Okay, bingo. Uh, we'll set this up over here. So that again, this is the backend management interface. <clears throat> We'd already configured it, but we want to change the IP to dot forty, so it actually marries up with our diagram. Okay, cool. We'll jump back to the network management center, and we've set it up. So why not use it? We'll remote on to the external host. One seven three twenty nine one twenty nine dot forty. Uh, I think the username is JP. Look at that! Almost like I planned it. Okay, yeah. So from here, then we just want to run a simple web connection into our web server. I think the external IP we used was eleven dot eleven dot eleven dot five, and then the firewall should map that over to ten dot eleven dot thirty three dot eleven, which I think it will do, but I don't think we configured the access rule for it. So let's just go and double check that. We'll have a look at our policies, our access control policy, and we're looking for the outside zone to DMZ. I think we just put a deny on there. 
Oh no, we did we did configure the I oh know that was the NAT table, just refreshing. Okay, so let's have a look. <clears throat> okay, uh, outside DMC. Okay, yeah, looks like we actually did configure it. Yeah, and then we have the default deny after it. Okay, so we should be good to go. Let's scoot back on over to the external host. And we'll plumb in the address and hopefully we get that same IIS web page. Eleven dot eleven dot eleven dot five. And there we go. That is our uh, well, this could be a web server for your company uh, yeah and we now allow traffic through the firewall natty it into the external ip and we have a secure dmz to work with to drop other services in there okay hopefully you've enjoyed that video if you have please like share subscribe and thank you for watching